Greetings, fellow Bible readers. Welcome to week 15 of our 2016 read-through of the Bible. This week, we're in the book of 1 Kings, and as we read through the chapters that are before us, we're going to notice two major themes being developed. The first of those themes is that of Solomon being a partial fulfillment of that, that promise God had made to David in 2 Samuel chapter 7, that he would raise up for him an offspring who would build a house for the Lord. The second theme that we we see in this section as the kingdom is divided into two parts is the the trend of rebellion on the part of that nation of Israel especially and God's continued attempts to call his people back to himself in repentance. So let's dive into the details of the readings for each day. On day one we focus in on or we read 1st Kings chapters 3 through 5. And here we see a number of examples of Solomon's wisdom that he asks the Lord for. We see it in the justice that he deals with in how he manages the kingdom. We see it in his arrangement of his officials. We see it in matters of science and biology. We see it even in his dealings with, with diplomacy on the international scene. And what's very interesting, especially about that diplomacy on the international scene, is that in that letter, in those letters that he sends to Hiram, the king of Tyre, uh, just to the north of Israel, he makes reference to that promise that God gave to David about having a son who would build a temple. And we see that, that again and again throughout these, verse, throughout these chapters. Then on day two, we look at chapters six and seven, and we're into the construction of the temple building itself. What might be very helpful as you read through those two chapters is to go ahead and go on Google and find yourself a picture of Solomon's temple. I've got one here in a, a book in my library. Um, but if you don't have a resource like that, then go online. There's lots of them available there. The other thing you might want to do, if you're a little fuzzy on your Bible measurements and weights, because there's a lot of them mentioned there, go ahead and I've provided a link in the description to the video below about the video I did on Bible weights and measures to help you get up to speed and refresh you on those a little bit. Then on day three, we look at chapters eight and nine, the dedication of that temple and a number of prayers that are offered and also an appearance the Lord makes to Solomon. And you'll want to pay attention, especially in this section, to how often that, that promise from 2 Samuel chapter seven that God made to David is referred to in this section. Also, there's a number of references to other promises of God. And it's a good encouragement for us that as Christians, um, what we do is we focus on those promises God has made and, and remember those promises in our daily lives. Then on day four, we look at chapters 10 and 11. And in these chapters, we see Solomon's, uh, well, kind of his falling away from the Lord. Uh, and we see very clearly how Satan often makes rebellion against God look attractive. He uses the foreign wives that Solomon had in order to lead him into idolatry. Then on day five, as we look at chapters 12 through 14, we see the rebellion against Solomon's son Rehoboam and the kingdom being split into two parts, Judah in the south and the ten northern tribes of Israel in the north. And there are two stories that are very interesting in this section. One is that man of God who goes and confronts Jeroboam about his idolatry. And what we see in that story is the, the man of God who preaches that word of God, and yet he turns away from it um, because of the lies of, of another guy who's, who's presenting himself as a prophet. And we learn the lesson that you always hold on to what God has said in his word and that he will not contra contradict himself. Then the second story that we get here that's kind of interesting is the story of Jeroboam's infant son who becomes sick. And what's very interesting as you read through what the prophet Ahijah has to say is he talks about how that infant son is going to die, but how that isn't actually um, the Lord doing something terrible, but the Lord actually doing something good for that child. And it's a story that really illustrates how sometimes what we see as a tragedy from our perspective is actually something where the Lord is doing um, something beneficial and positive for people. Then on day six, as we look at chapters 15 and 16, we see especially highlighted the fall of that kingdom of Israel into greater and greater idolatry against the Lord. 
and rebellion against him. And that sets up really the readings for day seven, where we look at chapters 17, 18, and 19, which contains the ministry of the prophet Elijah, the great prophet God sent in the Old Testament to call the nation of Israel back to himself. And it's very interesting as you read through the life of Elijah, just think about how the stories from Elijah's life illustrate some of the, the great teachings of God's word, because that happens in a lot of these stories. For instance, there's God's providence, which is seen in the widow of Zarephath. There is the doctrine of prayer illustrated very beautifully in the showdown between Elijah and the 450 prophets of Baal. There's the doctrine that God deals with people through his word, as illustrated in the encounter between the Lord and Elijah at Mount Horeb. And so as you read those, those stories from the account of Elijah, just think about the doctrines that are illustrated there. I've just listed a few, so be on the lookout for others. That's all for this week. We'll see you next week.